Shalom, shalom. My name is Davon Mays, and we are <clears throat> going to continue Kanye, Kyrie, Martin Luther King, and what the Torah says, part two. So we're going to jump right into this. So we left off on skin color does not determine your status. These signs do, which were Shabbat, tefillin, and circumcision. Deuteronomy 11, 26 to 28, behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way in which I command you today to go after other gods which you have not known. So again, <clears throat> it's not the skin color, it's the obedience to the commandments. So there was a movie called Gangs in New York came out while back and um very interesting so um black and white these are misleading labels so native americans are often often labeled as black right but then at the same time they're called red skin right then you have irish russian british italians and slavic people that you know they have differences that are just like the racism we saw with jim crow and they're all over you know, overall considered white by society, but we know they have different languages and cultures. So the reason I'm bringing up gangs in New York, it shows in the establishment of the white societies of America, it was a movie, but there was a, there was some truth to the story. So basically all these different, you know, the Irish and the British and the um, Italians and like the, 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 all these people are pretty much from Europe, but they don't like each other. They don't get along. They got different religions they got different de denominations within in, within the religion and they're not getting along with each other, but they're all classified as white, but they're not really, that's not really like a language. That's not really like a country called white. There's no country called black. So when to say, Oh, I'm a black Jew or I'm a white Jew or I'm a, you know, doesn't matter your skin color. Are you keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, like we just read in Deuteronomy. It doesn't say if you're black, you're a Jew, or if you're white, you're a Jew. It says, if you keep my commandments, blessing. If you don't, curse. That's what we just read. So people really need to get into the text and get out the emotions that have been stirred up by so many different labels put on people. So we talk about fake Jews, white Jew, black Jew, black Hebrew Israelites, imposter Jews, Hebrews to Negroes. <clears throat> Again, these, these titles that have been put on people, sometimes they have, you know, they, they well, I'm going to say sometimes they have history to them, but it doesn't always define somebody correctly. For instance, Deuteronomy 28, 37, you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations where the Lord will drive you. So in America, blacks and Jews are called bywords. Blacks are called niggas, excuse me, and most, you know, you could, I would say Ashkenazi Jews are called kikes. When I was little, and, you know, I'm sure it's different in different places, but I grew up in Park Hill in Colorado. And when I was younger and somebody got over on you, you would say you Jewed me. I didn't know what a Jew was. <laughs> I didn't know Jesus was Jewish. All I knew is if you did something that I didn't like, you Jewed me. That's what we used to say. That's like a byword. That's, you know, that's what that is. And we also would call each other Indian givers. If you gave something to somebody and you took, tried to take it back, oh, you're Indian giver, right? The weird thing is the U.S. government did this to the natives over and over, but the practice was named after the Indians. <laughs> the United States would give Indians territory and then come take it back, kill them, take it back. And then all of a sudden, the Indians are the ones called Indian givers. So it's kind of weird. But again, by words they're not and they're not even called indians that wasn't what they called themselves you got creek choctaw chickasaw cherokee right all these different names for native americans but they don't call themselves indians that was something given to them so a byword a person or thing cited as a notorious and outstanding example or embodiment of something so 
blacks and Jews have bywords on them. It's not something that only blacks have or something that only Jews have, or white Jews, I would say that. Because usually when people talk about Jews, they're usually referring to white Jews. Only here recently have black Jews and black Hebrew Israelites come into the conversation in the last, let's say, even 50 years. So before that, most people just talked about Jews. And I'm speaking from an American perspective. You know, from one time I was younger and what I heard my grandparents talk about, I never heard my grandparents or aunts and uncles talking about Jews that were black. Except for, of course, the when they're reading the Bible. You know, <laughs> but outside people that's actually in the Bible, and they're talking about the Jews on TV or Jerry Lewis or whoever else is an actor that has, you know, that's known to be a Jew or something like that. It was never nobody white. Sammy Davis Jr. But of course, he converted, but still, it wasn't common. Thou makest us a byword among the nations, a shaking of the head among the peoples. Psalm 44 and 14. This is from the Living Bible, because of course, different translations are going to give you different examples. You have made the word Jew a byword of contempt and shame among the nations, disliked by all. Another translation says, you make us a joke among the nations, a laughingstock among the peoples. Another translation says, foreigners joke about us and shake their heads. So this byword has been going on for a long time. It didn't start in America with the black Jews or the Ashkenazi Jews. It's way back in the book of Psalms. They have been called bywords for a long, long time. So nobody can, you know, attach this to themselves and say, see, that's only us. No. It's been around for a long time. And we're going to talk about how Israel was spread, very heavily spread amongst the nations. And not only Israel as the, 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 the direct descendants, but just Jews became very popular around the world. And specifically, not the only example, but there's, there's one specific event that had a huge impact on this. So... <clears throat> Black and white are not nations, like I said earlier, right? So there is no black or white nation or languages on the earth. Check the United Nations, right? You, you don't see the white country or the black country. There are African, European, Caribbean, Russian, Spanish languages, right? English has a, you know, 1 billion, 132 million speakers. Mandarin, a billion, over a billion speakers. Hindi, 615 million. Spanish, French, Arabic, Russian, Portuguese. These are like the top spoken languages in the world, and none of, them, none of them say white or black. Why is that? Because there's no white or black languages. These labels are very misleading. So to call somebody a white Jew or a black Jew is very artificial. They're just Jews. They're just Israelites. It doesn't matter what their skin color is. If they're not keeping the commandments, it doesn't matter. We need to get over this, this hump. Many of the people, many of the people of the land became Jews. Many of the people of the land became Jews. Not all of the people, but many. Esther 8 and 11, New King James Version. By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives, to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions. So if you're not familiar with the book of Esther, there was a decree by uh, Haman and the king of um, uh, Persia to kill all the Jews. Mordecai would not bow to uh, Haman, and Haman made a decree with the, along with the king. Oh, we're just going to kill all of the Jews then. Since one won't bow to me, I don't like none of them, right? Haman was Edomite. Haman was uh, <laughs> a descendant of Amalek, which is a whole problem, but that's what that's what's going on here. So why is this important? Excuse me. Fake Jews, white Jew, black Hebrew Israelites, imposter Jews, Hebrews to Negroes, right? Let's let's get into why all these titles right here don't really mean much. Because you're a fake Jew if you're an Israelite and don't keep the commandments. That means you're fake. When you're acting like something, but you're really not representing. Like if you were blood and never got quoted, right? <laughs> you, 
you you a basement crip. You and your homies call yourself crips from you know y'all, y'all, we call them you know hood basements. Or uh uh basically um you and your friends is in the basement and y'all come up with y'all's own hood, you know on on the block that you live on, but don't nobody else know about that hood y'all created in the basement. So Esther one and one. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this was the Ahasuerus who reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. From the Strong's Concordance, Akashvarosh, king of Persia, Esther 8 and 17. And in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Then many of the people of the land became Jews because fear of the Jews fell upon them. So if we're dealing with 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia, that's a lot of places. That's a lot of places. And not all these people speak the same language. They got different cultures. They look differently. You can argue they're people of color, but they're not all African. They're not all what we call black today. Indian people will not identify as black. They will tell you, no, I'm from Bangladesh. I'm not African-American. Africans from Africa will not tell you that they're black they'll tell you no i'm ethiopian or you know i'm from ghana they'll tell you their culture they'll tell you the language that they speak in that culture they do not identify as black people how we like to identify over in america and i ain't gonna say we like it but that's what we identify as black in america so 127 countries so let's look at this blow this up real quick So from India to Ethiopia. So here's India all the way to Ethiopia, 127 countries. So this region here, (laughs) I mean, I don't know how far up north it went or how far south, but you figure there's 127 countries in this area because it says India to Ethiopia. That's, you know, that's a big chunk of, of real estate right there. And all these people and many of the people of the lands became Jews. So when the Jews got scattered over the last 2000 years, they didn't all stay in this one region. If 127 countries, you got to figure all the wars and famines and marriages and business and traveling and just exploration, these people moved around the world. China's right next door. You got Africa. You got Europe up here. I mean, Turkey, like you got all these international places that people travel to to try to isolate Israel to America during a slave trade is like, what kind of research are you doing? It's very, it's very limited to say, oh, only the Jews were taking the, the, in the slave trade, first of all, a huge country like Africa to say that they were the only ones that was put on these boats and brought over is kind of, you know, ridiculous. For sure, many were, but to say only them, very unlikely. And if you wasn't in Africa, if you was in these 127 countries, you probably didn't end up in a slave trade and your people could have went all over the world. All over the world. Interesting, in, for instance, Hawaii, their high priest is called the Big Kahuna. Sounds a little Hebrew to me. Look up Kahuna in Hebrew. Kohen. Priest. So we got to get out of the mindset of, of only blacks in America are the Jews. 
it's just, just not even responsible to say such a thing. So, moving on. Let's bring this back down. So, to recover the remnant of his people who are left, Isaiah 11, 11 through 13. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt, from Pathros and Cush, from Elam and Shinar, from Hamath and the islands of the sea. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And also the envy of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not harass Ephraim. A lot going on here. All these different countries are mentioned and they all fall <laughs> into that same general area of the 127 countries. But it even talks about the islands of the sea. The four corners of the earth. That's everywhere. To try to only isolate Jews to, to America is crazy. And it also says that Judah and Ephraim are beefing. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not harass Ephraim. So basically, you got Jews hating on each other on top of the nations hating on the Jews, and on top of the Jews hating on the nations, and imitating them and practicing idolatry and doing everything else that the nations do is why they're in, in, the, in the problems that they are in the first place. So there's no way to isolate anybody to America only. I don't care if you got a 12 tribes chart, whatever. With this, this verse, th these verses just right here, before we even dealt, before we even go to the 127 countries, this verse right here is all you would even need on top of the Jews from the lands of the 127 countries. Descendants from the east and gather you from the west. Isaiah 43, 5 through 6, fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. So right here, we got, there's not... Uh, one son of God. We got sons. Bring my sons from afar. And you have daughters from the ends of the earth. Isaiah 49, 12. Surely these shall come from afar. Look, those from the north and the west, and these from the lands of Sinim. Isaiah 59 and 19. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. They coming from all over the place. The ends of the earth is not only black people. It's not only people from America. They coming from everywhere. Everywhere. Elcott's commentary for English readers from the West, literally from the sea, which commonly has this meaning in Psalm 107.3. However, it clearly stands for the South and is probably used in that sense here. In this case, from afar stands for the South, probably for the distant Ethiopia, where Jewish exiles had already found their way. And we know today in Israel, there's many Jews from Ethiopia. Zephaniah 3 and 10, from the land of Sinim. The region thus named is clearly the Ultima Thule of, prof of the prophet's horizon, and this excludes the Sinites of Canaan and the Sin Pelusium of Egypt. Modern scholars are almost unanimous in making it refer to the Chinese. Very interesting that the land of Sinem is has something to do with the Chinese. Didn't we just read that? These from the land of Sinem. So we got, do we got Chinese Jews? That don't sound like America. That don't sound like black Hebrew Israelites. 
Not to say that there aren't any black Hebrew Israelites. For sure there are. But they're not the only ones. <laughs> you can't exclude people when the text clearly tells you all the places that the people are coming from. I will also bring them back from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria. Zechariah 10 and 10. I'll, I'll, I will also bring them back from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon until no more room is found for them. So is America Egypt or Babylon? Babylon was destroyed and Egypt will remain. Isaiah 19. Read that. Read Isaiah 47, right? Because a lot of people want to say, well, America's Babylon or America's, you know, Egypt, is spiritual Egypt. You got traits of every country in America because America is full of the practices of the whole world. It's a very international place. But Babylon was destroyed. America is not Egypt. Has a lot of Egypt, Egyptian um, culture in it, though, for sure. Obelisks and all types of things like that. Jeremiah 31 and 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, the woman with the child and the one who labors with the child together, a great throne shall return there. So how can he be gathering Israel from all over the place and not only focus on the West, which we call America? Why is that? Why is that? So when people are talking about we are the Jews or the blacks in America are the Jews, you got to put the word some in there. Yeah, some of them are. Some of them ain't, though. And the ones who literally are true descendants, if they're not keeping the commandments, like I stated in the first video, then they're cut off from their people. And really, they have broken the contract, which means you're not from the people no more. So you basically, <laughs> you're messing up your, your bloodline. You're messing up your inheritance by not keeping the misvote. Gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Psalm 107, 1 through 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, <clears throat> whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. That sounds like from everywhere. And what people don't like to admit that are racist is the north <laughs> is Europe. The South is Africa. So you got two different racial groups. You got the blacks who don't like the Ashkenazi Jews, and you got some Ashkenazi Jews who won't acknowledge the blacks. So we, we got this same type of Ephraim versus Judah thing going on like we read earlier. Now, I'm not saying who's which, because don't nobody know. That's why people just use the term Jew, because... Nobody knows what tribes they're from. It's, you know, it's very difficult unless you specifically kept your genealogy. Most people fall into the category of a Jew, and you got some people who claim to be Cohen's or priests. Other than that, everybody's pretty much just called a Jew or an Israelite. Now, there are some people, like I said, who can say, oh, well, I'm from a descendant of Naphtali or, you know, Gad, excuse me, you can find a few people who identify with specific tribes, but for the majority of the people, they don't know. Most blacks in America go back three or four grandpas. After that, you don't know nothing. Really. I mean, with the genealogies and the technology today, you could probably do a little bit more digging. But on average, most people go back three, four, five grandmas. And, but beyond that, they don't know too much. So. 1 Kings 14, 15, the Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. He will root up Israel out of this good land that he gave to their ancestors and scatter them beyond the Euphrates because they have made their sacred poles provoking the Lord to anger. Again, sacred poles, all these things that the nations practice, they was, do, they was doing that a long time ago. So again, the Euphrates is way over by Iraq. 
If you, they're going to be scattered beyond the Euphrates, that means they ain't in Africa no more. They're not in Israel. They weigh across the land, which would then have them be scattered even more. They shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Isaiah 66, 19. I will set up a sign among them and those among them who escape, I will send to the nations, to Tarshish and to Pool and Lud, who draw the bow and to Baal and Javan, to the coastlands of afar off, <clears throat> who have not heard my fame nor seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. That's Israel's job, to be a light to the nation. So wherever they got scattered, they're able to teach Torah to the Jews, I mean, to the, to the, to the nations. They're not supposed to go around talking bad about people. If people are ignorant of things, you don't diss them and, you know, disrespect them. You're supposed to be teaching them Torah. You don't declare God's glory by calling people names based on where they was born at as if they had a choice. And everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say this. I don't have to say no names, but everybody knows who stands on corners, yell and screaming at people and argue with people, <laughs> being, being very disrespectful, uh, crazy, terrible language. If you do have the truth, don't nobody want it from you because you don't know how to talk to nobody. The, the, the cussing and the disrespect is just crazy from so-called Israelites. It's just, it's amazing. Like, wow. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will still choose Israel and settle them in their own land. The strangers will be joined with them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. A lot of Jews and a lot of Israelites don't like these verses. They want to be isolated. They don't want nobody to be able to be down with Israel. Why is this? Zechariah 14, 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone who was left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So everyone who was left of all the nations, that's a lot of people, all the nations. So if you survived this last war, you're going to go to Israel to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That sounds like people that ain't Jews are going to get down with the Jews. Now, if a sojourner or stranger close to you, so there's specific people who teach that when you see the word stranger and foreigner, it's still referring only to Israelites, which is <sighs> ridiculous, but there are times that it can refer to Israelites, for instance, it says that Abraham was a foreigner in the in the land. He was in, you know, he wasn't from he was from Ur of Chaldea. He was called a foreigner and he was he was an Israelite, but he was the father of the Israelites or, you know, a grandfather. But when you read out of context, you can make anything say anything. Leviticus 25, 47 to 48. Now, if a sojourner or stranger close to you becomes rich and one of your brethren who dwells by him becomes poor and sells himself to the stranger or sojourner close to you or to a member of the stranger's family after he is sold he may be redeemed again one of his brothers may redeem him if this stranger or sojourner is really your brother then this verse doesn't make any sense because you basically buying and selling each other so why call him a sojourner or somebody close to you? Why does it say a member of the stranger's family? It'd be like a member of your family. <laughs> and if he's close to you, that means he lives among you. And you should know who your family is if they live close to you. Exodus 23 and 9. Also, you should not oppress a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger because you were strangers in the land of Egypt. If, they, if this was really just another Israelite, it should say you should not oppress your brother who is a stranger. But don't say that. Psalm 54 and 3. For strangers have risen up against me and oppressors have sought after my life. They have not set before, they have not set God before them. Who risen, who's rising up against this psalmist? Was it other Israelites? Why is he calling them strangers? Why does he say my brethren have risen up against me? 
and oppressors have sought after my life. Could have used the word brother there. You may sell it to a foreigner. Deuteronomy 14, 21. You shall not eat anything that dies of itself. You may give it to the alien who is within your gates. What's an alien within your gates? A foreigner, not your brother. That he may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. You are a holy people, but you may sell it to a foreigner. Wouldn't that be a contradiction? You can sell it to your brother, but you can't eat it. But y'all all Israel. If Israel are also the foreigners and the strangers, can they sell this type of meat to themselves? Yes or no? This teaching, when you take it out of context, it makes no sense to say that the strangers and the foreigners are also only Israelites. <laughs> Again, when people want to just isolate Israel <laughs> to themselves, it's, they'll do anything and they'll say anything. So I'm going to stop there. Again, a lot to digest. Israel is not one race, one color of people, one language, one dialect of people. It's a vast majority of people, even from the time of the kings of Persia in the book of Esther, alone, on top of Isaiah 11. Read it, study it. Trying to isolate Israel to one you know, uh, demographic is just crazy. Um, and we know, for instance, with the movie Hebrews and Negroes, it documents the influence in the culture of Israel all through Africa and many places, for sure. But it ain't only in Africa, as I've shown. You have to acknowledge that. If you don't want to acknowledge that, fine. But that's what the text tells us. So if you want to ignore the text again, that's kind of on you, right? So that's that's what I'm doing. I'm showing you everywhere that the text goes and explaining where Israel are scattered, what happened, and you know why they're all over the place. Just that decree that Haman made backfired. He wanted to kill the Jews, and he ended up exploding the population of Israel all over the world. You go against the Most High, you end up helping them. So with that, this is part two, and we will see you next time. Shalom.